Welcome back, everyone, to the final session, the final presentation of Big Talk from Small Libraries 2015. This is Michael Kristen Laura here at the Nebraska Library Commission in Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, we are uh, wrapping the day up here. And so just to remind everybody, everything is being recorded. Uh, the slides and the videos will be put up starting next week after uh, all of this is over and we, we can edit everything uh, apart. Uh, if you have any questions or comments during our final session here, you can submit them via uh, the questions and answers area in the GoToWebinar interface or via Twitter using the hashtag BTSL. So with us for our final presentation of the day is Doris Ann Mertz, the Library Director of Custer County Library in South Dakota, uh, speaking on the Senior Connection, Helping Technology Make Sense to Seniors. Welcome, Doris, and go ahead, take it away. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to present and talk about how, how we have started getting uh, our seniors updated with the newest technology. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm not an expert at presenting a webinar. I've never done this before, so you may have to bear with me. And I also need to say that I'm not a technology expert either, so, uh, but that's one of my points in this presentation is that uh, you don't have to know everything to start helping seniors, you just have to know more than they do <laughs> in order to help them. Okay. Okay, we want to talk about uh, why we want to reach out to seniors, why is this the purpose of the library. And at our library, I was kind of uh, uh, encouraged to do this by my library board. Uh, so when I came here in 2011, we spent some time uh, trying to improve our children's programs, and then later we moved on to the teen programs. And then at my last uh, performance evaluation, they always give me three goals for the coming year. And uh, this year, one of them was a focused outreach to seniors. And it also fits into our mission statement. The mission of our library is to provide resources and services in a welcoming environment to support a diverse community of lifelong learners. And I think sometimes we... Uh, forget that seniors are still learners. They, uh, they need to be served and we need to help teach them. And also, um, it helps us with our accreditation standards in the state of South Dakota. We have to host and evaluate outcomes of programs for children, teens, and adults. And this gives us a kind of a different type of adult program that we can put on besides just book discussions and uh, writing workshops and, and gives us a chance to evaluate if we're helping our community by doing this. And I think that all libraries in every community should uh, reach out to seniors because there's a need there. Seniors need a place to go to for help with technology. Their grandkids know how to do it, but uh, they don't actually slow down enough to show them. They just end up taking over the device or the computer and doing it for them. And they go so fast that it just uh, kind of leaves them more intimidated instead of less. So basically, you can choose to meet that need, not to meet that need, or you can serve that need on an unorganized drop-in basis, which is what we used to do. Or you can formalize the training and make it more effective. Uh, anytime I try to start a new venture, I see if there's a, you know, a suitable partner in my community that it would make sense to, to work with, and so we could both help our, our patrons and the ones we serve. So, uh, you know, if it's the kids programming, I work with the Y, and uh, of course with the seniors, I wanted to reach out to the senior center. They can, uh, and I think most communities have senior centers, even our. We are a county library, and we have a senior center here in the larger town of Custer, and we also have one over in Hermosa. So I think most small communities have senior centers, so it's good to reach out and involve them. For one thing, they can help you with scheduling. Um, they know the habits of the people who come to the senior center, the people they serve, and they can help you pick a time that is the best to uh, host programs. And sometimes that's a challenge, is figuring, figuring out the best time to schedule a program so you get the most people able to come. And they also are great at helping promote the events. We have a senior, newsle senior center newsletter, and it's read by uh, 
you know, all the senior citizens read that. I hear them talking about what they read in the newsletter when they come into the library. So she can uh, promote it in her building and in the newsletter, and that really helps me out. So if you form a partnership with any group, uh, like the Senior Center, it can be formal or informal. We're just a kind of an informal community here, so ours is informal, and uh, we both have the common goal, wanting to provide programs to enhance the lives of seniors, so we just coordinate, determine what classes they'd like, we set a date and time, and then we determine how to best promote it. There's a lot of benefits to, uh, to reaching out to seniors and to partnering with the Senior Center. Well, the first thing is obvious, you, it helps you fulfill a need in the community, and I'm sure even if you're not providing senior-focused uh, programming, you know that there's a need to help them with technology and helps to enhance the lives of seniors. Uh, once you get them onto overdrive books, that uh, those large print readers have so much more of a variety than what they get just in your library in large print books because they can change the font size on any book they check out. So it uh, enhances their lives. And being able to check and see grandkids' pictures on Facebook, that's definitely a, helps them to be more in touch with their family. You have improved attendance at programs from partnering with the Senior Center because of what we talked about, scheduling and promotion. You have an increased use of library resources, whether it be more checkouts through OverDrive or more use of your electronic resources like Ancestry. And you increase the library's footprint in your community. By partnering with the Senior Center, we become more visible in the community, and we're increasing our support base. So uh, I've heard a lot of presenters talk about this already today. Uh, sometimes you've got to take the library to the community before you get the community coming into your library more. So I went down to the Senior Center, met with the director there, and we decided we're going to provide these technology programs. And we provide the first one at the Senior Center because it's a familiar environment for them where they feel comfortable. We scheduled the program for early afternoon. Uh, they come in town a lot for the senior lunch, and they could just stay after that and take advantage of our program. We, uh, when we got together, we talked about some, some ideas of programs they might like. And of course, uh, one of the obvious ones was the introduction to Facebook. Uh, we also talked about a bring your own device kind of session where they could come and learn how to use OverDrive to check out downloadable eBooks and audio books. We decided to offer a Tablets 101 class where um, it's not just focused on OverDrive, but on using tablets or smartphones, either one, for uh, any use that they had that they were wanting to learn to use it for. We talked about Book a Librarian, where they could we could promote that they can call and make an appointment, and I could sit down with them one on one, and we'd work on the the things they want to learn to do with their tablet or smartphone. And of course, Ancestry Library, a lot of the seniors are interested in uh, genealogy, family tree type stuff, so we thought we would do that. Uh, that's all we've done so far. We just had the Ancestry class last week, but we're going to have some other classes on the other electronic resources, like uh, maybe Mango Languages. I have some seniors who come in here wanting to learn new languages. Sometimes they go on trips and they want to learn that language somewhat before they go on their trip. So I think that will be our next session. Okay, our first class was an introduction to Facebook. Uh, seniors, <laughs> even if they have don't really want to get on it their own, they feel pressured to get on Facebook because they want to see pictures of their grandkids. and. Uh, Hardly anyone mails photos in the mail, and they also rarely email the pictures anymore. They just tell them to get on Facebook, and they can see their grandkids. So this is the one we held at the Senior Center. We focused on several things, like uh, developing a profile, adjusting the privacy settings, adjusting the notification settings. A lot of time on the privacy, um, they're worried everybody can see it. You know, they need to be aware that they can manage what people see and if they adjust them people can only see their cover photos and don't get to see everything else and uh, a lot of people didn't like Facebook because of 
their email getting full of notifications from Facebook, and uh, we showed them how you can adjust that and make uh, Facebook less intrusive into their life. Some wanted to know how to upload photos, so we talked about that. We talked about how to message privately. <laughs> Some have gotten in trouble with their family for uh, posting something on the wall of a family member, and they've been told, you should have sent that in a private message, Mom, so everyone can <laughs> see it. So they uh, actually sometimes don't know how to send a private message, so we talked about how to do that. We talked about how to add and uh, remove friends, and uh, so because sometimes they don't know how to expand their list of friends, and we we uh, went through how to how to do that and how to search for friends and how to look at you know some of the family members they're all already friends with and see who their friends are and you know uh, send friend requests to them. And we talked about <laughs> unfollowing certain friends, which is uh, kind of important because. Sometimes you uh, accept a friend request some, from someone and then their posts are very annoying and you don't want to have to see them. So uh, we talked about how they could unfollow friends and you know not unfriend them where the friend would notice, but they can unfollow the friend and that friend doesn't know that you're not being bothered with their posts in your newsfeed. Okay, um, one of the... Uh, so we're going to talk about some things that worked for us, some things I think are good ideas, and some things that are are not and stuff and throughout this session. But uh, one thing you'll hear me say over and over is to provide handouts for them to take home. If you tell them up front you're giving them handouts, then they don't you know, write notes furiously while you're talking, and they try to focus more on playing in the... Uh, on the computer or on the application. So if you'll just tell them you're providing these to take home, you can give them to them beforehand if you like. I didn't. I just wanted to focus on using it, but but showing them that the uh, handouts they took home would have pictures and help them remember how to do everything. That makes them be able to relax a little bit. So uh, to make handouts, uh, I think it's good to make handouts of the actual um, you know, the Facebook page, and I just use a snipping tool that's in the accessories on my computer to take uh, pictures of certain sections of the screen, and then I insert the pictures into Word documents and add, you know, text and arrows and circles and stuff to help them find what we're talking about in the notes. They're not uh, fancy handouts. I'm, I'm not a fancy person, but they're, uh, they do find them helpful, and it uh, does help them to remember what we went over. If you don't provide some kind of handout, they're, they're probably never going to remember that you go to this little arrow and then go to settings, and that's how you get to the area where you adjust your notifications. So you need to uh, you know, provide handouts with pictures to help them through this. Uh, it's, it's just not intuitive to them at this point to click on that little arrow. They won't remember. They'll just think, how did we get to that place where we uh, managed our notifications? So, And uh, I know these don't look great on slides, but consider these are handouts. They take them home. The font's pretty big when you're looking at it on a handout. It's just not great for a slide. All right. Uh, here's some things I learned from the class, and you can benefit from what I've learned. Uh, I didn't specify that the class was for laptops and PCs. So I had uh, nine of them had laptops and PCs, and then one had the Facebook app on an iPad, which is just enough different to, uh, you know, that they're left out of the loop a little. So I had to spend time with everybody on the laptops and then, uh, and then work with her individually afterwards. So you probably want to specify if the Facebook class is for laptops or for apps, and uh, if it is for apps, you'll make, need to make a separate set of take-home handouts. Okay, um, next thing is you need to start the class by determining the needs of the group. When I, um, when everyone showed up, I had to ask them where they were at, and all but one already had an account, so uh, it wasn't starting from scratch, and, uh, and I found out that most just wanted to be able to view other people's stuff and not to post. Some did want to upload photos, but it didn't seem like they were interested in, you know, posting everything they've done lately like uh, the younger groups are. So we talked about that, providing take-home handouts already. 
and um, you need to know what your Wi-Fi can handle. Uh, I'd have liked to have held more classes at the senior center than just this one, but it turned out their Wi-Fi couldn't handle a lot of action, so we were uh, we spent a lot of time waiting on responses on the laptops. So uh, you need to probably figure that out beforehand. How many people could get on a laptop on that Wi-Fi and it still work? So we've uh, had to hold the rest of the classes here at the library because we have a little better Wi-Fi connection. Oh, this is, uh, I think, important for seniors. You, you need to help them distinguish between their timeline and their news feed because some of them get upset that um, they think everything everyone else is posting and that's showing up on their news feed is what people can see when they go to their page. So you need to uh, help them understand that the timeline is what people see when they go to their page and they can control what's on there. They can even control uh, you know, if people tag them, they might have to review it and allow it on their timeline instead of uh, just allowing anything on there. But they <laughs> they kind of get nervous that some of this this stuff they think is inappropriate is showing up on their newsfeed, and they think people can see that when they go to their site. So, and you know, and just remember to help them learn how to unfollow people. <laughs> So uh, does anybody have questions so far on the Facebook side of thing before I move on? Um, yeah, actually, I think we did have one question come in, Laura. Uh, it's kind of a simple question. They're asking They're easy, if sorry. Um, <laughs> they could get a copy of the, your uh, Facebook handouts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fine. Like I said, they're pretty... Um, they're pretty simple. <laughs> well, you know, hey, yeah. simple is good. So, yeah, simple is fine. And uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll try to get those from Doris, and we'll uh, include them with her recording and her presentation afterwards. Yeah. So. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah, that, that's it for now. Okay, thanks. Okay, the next class we offered was a bring your own device class, and we uh, used that class to learn how to check out e-books and audio books through OverDrive. Um, in the center of the picture here is Fran. She's uh, one of my large print readers, and um, she checked out one of our tablets we have here at the library because she um, she has to read when she's reading the large print in our uh, library. She's often reading stuff she's really not interested in, but you know we only have a li limited amount of the budget that we can put towards large print books. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so. Um, she was a little hesitant to check out our tablet, but I encouraged her to do it and told her I'd help her through it and get her used to it. So she, she checked out the tablet, and she really enjoyed it. And uh, we let her keep it for six weeks, two, three-week periods, and then, <laughs> and then she had to check it back in. But she said she ended up being spoiled because she liked being able to make that font really big, and she liked that the book was, uh, the tablet was lightweight compared to the large print books. and. And uh, she she mentioned that one time. The next time she came in, she told me that she needed me to help her find a tablet and buy it that she'd hinted to her kids, but they just weren't uh, responding fast enough, and she wanted to be able to read on a tablet. So we uh, I uh, we're a small library, so <laughs> we do things like this sometimes. But we just uh, we just went to Whoop.com, which often has good deals on um, tablets and laptops and things like that. If you're ever needing to buy a prize for a drawing or something, I'd recommend looking there and watching for the deals. But we found her an Android tablet at whoop.com. Uh, she doesn't have a credit card, of course, so I used my credit card and bought the tablet and a good cover for her, and she just right away wrote me the check for the amount. And when it arrived, we set it up with the OverDrive app and loaded some books for her. And um, she came to our Bring Your Own Device class so she could get more comfortable with uh, checking out her own books. She still has to come to the library or, or go to her daughter, Janet, who's in the picture with her. She has to go to one of those places to do the OverDrive because she doesn't have Wi-Fi at home. But uh, she was... Uh, able to understand the checkout process. I went through it with her before and then she came to the class and you know after a little bit of repetition she's getting comfortable with it and she's enjoying it and I feel really glad that we were able to improve Fran's life and now she can read any book that's in our overdrive catalog instead of being limited to what's in our meager large print collection here at the library. So um, some suggestions I have for this bring your own device class is that 
when you promote it as well as uh, when they call and ask for information about it and everything, you need to stress the need to bring their passwords because, uh, you know, if they've got a Kindle Fire and uh, they can't remember their Amazon password, then you're stuck. And if they, if someone set up their tablet for them and they can't remember their um, their Google password or their um, iTunes or Apple Store password, then you're stuck. So stress the need for passwords. Um, if you have a bring your own device class, narrow the focus of the class. For example, this class was on OverDrive. You could have one about Facebook, you know, or whatever is the latest thing that everyone's wanting to use. But we just uh, in ours it was narrowed into work, uh, working on getting comfortable with OverDrive. You should um, group similar devices. So um, pretty much, if it's um, <clears throat> if it's an iPad, an iPod, an iPhone, group those together because those will work similarly. Your Kindle devices you should group together, and uh, Android tablets like if it's Asus, Samsung, different brands like that, they're usually the Android, uh, the Android type of uh, device. And uh, I have never ever had anyone that was a Windows phone or a Windows uh, Surface tablet user come to me for help with anything. I think that, I mean, my theory is that if they bought a Windows device, that they're pretty up on their technology already <laughs> because for some reason I've never had to help anyone with one of those. Um, the next suggestion is uh, provide some library tablets for test drives so people can see if they actually like using one and, uh, and might want to consider getting one themselves. Um, and they're not very expensive. You know, if you buy one of these Samsung uh, Galaxy, well, she is, <laughs> I forgot the name, but uh, the Asus is what we bought. But you can get deals on them, like I said, at the whoop.com and you can just keep your eye out for deals, buy one, get it set up with a good cover, and uh, I like to have a stylus with it because they seem to do well with a stylus. And uh, provide some take-home handouts uh, for those who need them. The overdrive's a little simpler to get around in, I think, probably than finding everything on Facebook, but I have uh, handouts that I've made for our tablets that we check out and I just give them, if they had an Android version, I give them a copy of this handout to take home with them so that they can remember the steps. Um, this is a sample of part of the handout. It just walks you through the steps of tapping borrow, tap download, you know, check Adobe EPUB book. I think they took the uh, Adobe part off now, but and then that seems like the seniors don't, uh, they think they've done all the steps, but for some reason OverDrive makes made this confirm and download so small that they don't really notice that pop up there and don't remember to you know finish it by clicking on that so uh, this reminds them to do that I don't know why that part has to be so small but <laughs> that's just me so like I uh, the other Facebook where I use the snipping tool to take pictures of my Facebook page on this one I just actually took the a camera or the iPad or something and made pictures and uh, and then I just inserted them into the Microsoft Word file and uh, added the arrows and instructions and stuff. So uh, this also, once again, it helps them relax if, if you tell them they can take something home that helps them through the steps. Uh, I, I'm not showing you all the pages from my handouts, but this uh, I think this is also an important page to include. They they want to learn, they want to know how to change the font size. So if you'll show them, you know, when they're reading a book, those menus are not there and they can't remember <laughs> how to get the menus back there. So, you know, by having a handout that reminds them to tap the middle of the page and that the menus will come up and then which one is the settings icon and, and how to change the font size, that helps them uh, to get that process done. And they also are always concerned about how to return the book when they're done. They want to return it as soon as they're done and um, this way you can show them all they have to do is uh, press and hold the book and then tap return and say yes. So that is pretty simple and this way they have the instructions with them to take home. So, so that's what I have on the bring your own device. Does anyone have any questions on this section? No. Um, let's see, uh, questions from the audience? I think you were saying one or two came in that, that uh, you managed to answer while, uh, while they, you were talking. They were interested in what kind of tablets you have and how do you check them out. 
we have, um, I have ASUS, I don't know if that's the way you even pronounce it, A-S-U-S, that's, <laughs> I have that kind because that's the kind I'm familiar with, I bought one for my husband for Christmas last year, and uh, it was a good deal, and it's a basic Android device, mm -hmm. and uh, I outfitted it with a nice cover and a stylus, and then I bought a bag to put it in, uh, I can't remember what kind of bag it is, but it, then it has a area where you can put the charger and stuff so they can take it home, and uh, I fold up the instructions and put in there, and we just add it to our catalog. Um, I forgot what the category is. It's, there's a category in our, uh, we use De Follett's Destiny, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a category we put that into, and we just check it out. They have an agreement they sign before they take it home and it tells them how much everything cost and that they're responsible for it if they lose it and stuff like that. So is that, is that everything they wanted to know or is there something else? I, I think that covers it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. All right. The, uh, the third class we offered was Tablets 101. Uh, the class was focused on learning to use a tablet or a smartphone. I let them use smartphones as well. Uh, just for various purposes. It wasn't focused on using overdrive, but if enough of them wanted to know how to do that, that's what we covered. Um, these are some thoughts that come to mind when I think about seniors and tablets. Many of them were received as gifts for Christmas. Sorry, I had to get some water. <laughs> They're not sure they want it. A lot of times their kids set it up for them. Uh, Passwords. Sometimes the kid, their uh, kid or whoever gave them the gift, helped them set it up, but uh, they don't know where the passwords are, and we get stuck if they just drop in and don't have the passwords. We can't, we can't make any progress because you can't download an app without the passwords. Um, it's good to have a stylus handy because uh, they're like me, and I don't know. I have. Fingers that don't work very well on tablets, I think. Uh, I see other people just, you know, make stuff bigger and smaller and have no trouble, and I just feel more comfortable with a stylus to tap on things and do things, and they seem to like that as well. And uh, some of them need, you know, really basic skills like just how to swipe and how to, uh, you know, how to make the screen larger or smaller and all that stuff, so um, you'll have to help some some will know that already when they come in, but some don't, so you have to start at the basics sometimes. Uh, some suggestions I have for the Tablets 101 class. One is to limit the class size. Um, I, uh, I, I would suggest probably five students per one helper. You know, if you have someone else helping you or something, then you can have a bigger class. If, if it's just you, probably, you know, five or six would probably be a good size. Uh, survey the desires of the folks who come in there and focus on the top three. These kind of classes are a little scary because uh, it's not like you can prepare a PowerPoint and just go through it because you don't really know what they want to use their tablet or smartphone for, and you don't know that until they show up. So um, I just ask them, you know, what they want to learn out of the class, you know, and and. Uh, and then we focus on the top three. If we get time to go on to anything else, then we do. I remind them that I can, um, if we don't cover what they wanted to learn, that I can uh, cover that in an individual session later, that this is not their only chance to learn. And uh, I found that some of the common requests when we want to know what they want to do is that they want to be able to do their email on the tablet or smartphone. They'd like to learn to use Facebook. They want to learn how to share photos. Some Sometimes they come with a tablet and they've been taking photos like crazy with it, but they don't know how to do anything with them, so we uh, they want to know how to do that. Sometimes they want to learn OverDrive, and um, some of them are interested in using it as a GPS and uh, not having to have a separate GPS in the car. Some uh, like the idea that they can talk with family through FaceTime or Skype, and some just uh, they like games and music like uh, like the younger folks do. So I have more suggestions, <laughs> and I already talked about this one. Offer individual help with the topics you don't get around to in the class. Uh, group similar devices, just like in the the other class. You know, have your Android 
folks sitting together and then you know Android when I'm using that it's just a generic term for the ones that don't use a Windows platform or and it's not a, it's not a iPad iPod iPhone kind of device uh, group similar skill levels if you have a you know if you have a larger class and you have some helpers then you might want to break them up into ones that you know need help learning how to just swipe the pages and all that stuff and ones who've already been you know playing with theirs and gotten comfortable with it but want to learn how to do uh, some specific things uh, now like I said you could expand your class to smartphones but just make sure it's a real smartphone I had the <laughs> I had uh, someone had a phone it was like a touch screen it was a touch screen version of a phone but it wasn't really a smartphone it had a a browser that allowed you to do limited things like just check your email and the weather and uh, that was very frustrating <laughs> that was I almost felt like buying her a different device so I never had to see that one again I hated it so much <laughs> but uh, and also this is a suggestion I think they like uh, to know there's that voice com command option um, because some of them the typing texting is a very tedious process and they spend as much time you know, erasing stuff that they typed as they do typing stuff. So if you show them that they can say it, some of them really like that, some of them don't, but uh, at least show them there's that option and how to use it. And once again, provide handouts of the basics. And <laughs> this, uh, I guess I made a mistake in this class. Uh, I was so worried about keeping the class size manageable because I put it out there we were going to have this class. And I was afraid I'd be overwhelmed with the number of people and they'd all have different devices and different questions and uh, that I just, <laughs> I wouldn't be up to it. So um, if I did it again, I'd ask people to register and, you know, and limit the class size. And uh, I was so terrified I'd be overwhelmed that I, when folks called expressing an interest, I tried to steer them to the Book a library, and in the in the same article I talked about this class. I talked about with book a librarian, but uh, when they call about it, I I tried to get them to do the book a librarian. So I had twelve book a librarian sessions that month, which was great, but only had three show up for the uh, actual class, which was which actually turned out to be a good thing because of that phone that wasn't a smartphone. Uh, took uh, after I helped the other ladies with their tablets and smartphones we tried to work with that and she just got it out of the box and it was uh, I don't know the most frustrating device I've ever dealt with <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways and here's um, here's a handout suggestion I have uh, I believe in borrowing stuff as long as you give people credit and uh, if you go to this website at the bottom of the screen um, they have this tech savvy seniors uh, section on that website and they have training guides, introduction to tablets, uh, you know, laptops, different things. So I borrowed their introduction to tablets handout, printed out several and uh, the handout went over the things you see here, um, talked about tablets, what they are and how they're different than a PC and what the difference was between iPad, Android and Windows and about using the uh, touch screen and understanding how to you know swipe the page and make things larger and smaller and how to connect to the Wi-Fi how to use the browser and how to use the keyboard um, sometimes that's confusing for them they see you using a keyboard and then they can't remember how you got that keyboard to come up there and they just <laughs> you know they need a little repetition that if you tap in this in the area you're wanting to type that that keyboard will just come up there and uh, so we, uh, it covers a lot of things and they get to take that home and um, I think it's a kind of a helpful handout to provide them. So, and once again, you know, show them how to use voice command. Some like it, some don't. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on this section? Um, we just had one question from the previous, we had a kind of a clarification on the, the checking out question and, and maybe you could speak to this just very briefly. Uh, I, okay. I think their concern was kind of the fact that if, you, if you're checking out a library device to somebody that needs their own account, say for OverDrive, and then they return mm -hmm. it, how, how are you handling the multiple accounts on individual devices situation? I set up a dummy account. Um, I made up a number and I put it in the uh, 
in the overdrive and told it to memorize it. I think it was like nine nine is a bunch of nines. Oh, nice. <laughs> but anyways, I set up a dummy number that goes just with that device and they use that number instead of their own number when they check out that device. Now if they buy their own, I show them how to put their number in it and tell the device to remember it and okay. they use their own number. But for those, I have a dummy number. Okay, great. Actually, uh, that, I wasn't expecting that answer, but that works. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so do we have others from, from this section, recent questions? Yeah, uh, somebody says, how do you define senior? Would you allow someone younger? I think she's angling to be invited. <laughs> uh, I, I do younger people in the book of librarians, but not when I uh, market the class to seniors because I want them to not feel intimidated and they like to know that they're in a group um, with people that are, you know, not raised in the tech generation and stuff like that. But I offer the book of librarian to any age. I don't have teenagers <laughs> calling me because they don't need my help, but... Uh, you know, middle-aged folks do take advantage of the Book of Library. When, well, you, when you say senior, do you have a cutoff? Do you have a... Oh. No, I don't. I don't know what's <laughs> considered a senior. Whoever gets that senior newsletter that it's promoted in, and if they consider themselves a senior, then uh, then they're welcome. They kind of, <laughs> I kind of figure it starts They, they self-select, yeah. basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Some people wouldn't want to be considered a senior, so they wouldn't show up. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and someone says, "Do you charge for the class?" No. Mm -mm. It's just a service we offer the community. <laughs> and uh, there, what was that website mentioned for buying inexpensive tablets? Woot w o o t dot com. Yeah. They 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 have different things every day though. They don't always have. The same yeah. thing. Although that's where I've got one of my recent tablets, actually. So I, w I will back that up. It's certainly refurbished stuff, but completely reliable. Yeah. Yeah. I buy a lot of refurbished things for my family, and we've never had problems with them. So. Yeah, me too. So. Okay. So, all, right. all right. On to the book of librarian. Um, book of librarians, just individual one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, they, um, I think that they are better than drop-ins because you can schedule them at a, a convenient time and you get to emphasize the need for bringing passwords. I mean, if you've done this stuff on a drop-in basis, you understand what I'm talking about, that you can't get anywhere without the passwords because if, even if you ask Amazon to uh, change the password and send you an email, then when we get into their e try to log into their email, they can't remember the password for that either because their home computer, you know, is set up to remember it and they haven't probably typed it in in a long time. So emphasize that they're going to need their uh, passwords. And um, yeah, in the past, before this last year, um, I, I offered one-on-one -on -one help, but uh, it was just when they dropped in and if I could fit it in and then I didn't know how long it would last sometimes and it just uh, wasn't the most efficient way for me to help people. So, uh, you know, and then we spent a lot of time just working on trying to remember passwords and stuff. So doing the Book of Librarian has been a lot more efficient for me. And then um, I try to focus on the top three desires, what they want to learn to do with uh, whatever they brought, the tablet, the smartphone, whatever they're needing help with, even if it's something, um, you know, on the computer, how to use Ancestry or whatever, just focus on what they, find out what they want to learn to do. Uh, sometimes they have a new tablet someone gave them and they don't know what they want to do with it because they didn't really want it. <laughs> you know, somebody else thought they should have it and um, you can tell them, you know, get them excited about it by telling them all the things that they can do with it and then asking them, you know, what would you like to do? Sometimes I get out my phone and show them some things I have on there that I find useful and, uh, and then they'll, they'll decide what they want to learn to do with it. Sometimes uh, they bring a device that's set up and sometimes it's just turned on and uh, if, uh, if they have all the account information with them, then, uh, then it's okay if they have it set up already and at least if they just got it out of the box, you're able to be there with them when they're setting up their Gmail account or whatever and you're writing down the passwords and you know you're not going to be um, stuck at not being able to get a password. So. If it's been set up, it's usually been done by a friend or a, a family member, and 
and hopefully, you know, if you're doing this book a library and you've asked them to get those number, the passwords for you before they come, and um, so sometimes it is set up, but the the patron themselves have not actually been using it or playing around on it. So they're a little bit. Uh, I find the seniors in the beginning to be a little bit afraid to just play around. You know, you give it to a kid, they'll play around and figure out how to use it, and the seniors are afraid they'll <laughs> mess something up. So sometimes they haven't played with it at all. All right. Some uh, suggestions for things to go over is to add a free app from the App Store and uh, show them uh, how to move apps around. Uh, I have some uh, grandparents that come in after their grandchildren have come to visit and they want to know how to get rid of some of the games their kids have added. Sometimes they want the game to still be there for when the next time the kid comes, but they don't want it on their home screen because you know, they don't want some war game on their home screen when, ki uh, when somebody looks at their tablet. So I just I show them how to get rid of ones, how to uninstall apps, and how to move them around, and how to make sure the apps that they most want is on their home screen, and, and, uh, you know, and how there are several <laughs> of those home screens, and if they don't see what they're used to seeing to, you know, uh, navigate to the left or right, swipe left or right till they find the one they're used to seeing, because sometimes that scares them when they... Uh, find they're on a different screen than they're used to. So um, show them how to ex access their settings. Uh, we usually have to do that right away because they all have uh, tablets that are timing out so fast it just gets aggravating. So we go right in there and uh, adjust their timeout so it doesn't go to sleep so fast. And we adjust the screen brightness to show them how to adjust the sound effect sound effects because some of them make a noise every time you you know tap on the keyboard there's a noise and that's annoying to some of them and uh, so we just sent some of that stuff right off the bat and I put the settings uh, the settings icon in a really visible place on their home screen or even down at the bottom where it'll be on any screen that they're on they'll still be able to access their settings um, we I show them how to navigate and find menus and that you know, if there's three bars or three dots, it usually means there's a menu there. And how, you know, all the devices are different, but uh, sometimes you tap a screen, sometimes you swipe from the top or the bottom or different things like that. And we just search for how you find the menus on their particular device, and uh, you know, and just what what a menu would look like. And uh, I encourage them to play; that they're probably not going to break it. And uh, I always remind them before they leave that if it starts acting strange and doing things different than what they expect uh, just to restart it, you know, to press the button and hold it and restart it because just like a computer sometimes it needs rebooted when it's acting goofy so that, you know, because sometimes I get phone calls and people's uh, tablets acting up and that's the first thing we try is just restarting it and it usually starts behaving. Um, I just had some stories to share. Well, I don't know if I have a lot of time to do this, but uh, I was just going to talk about um, Joyce. Uh, she's a nursing home resident here in our town, and she's a voracious reader. I mean, that's pretty much all she gets to do anymore. And uh, she gets around town in an electric wheelchair. And she, uh, when I first got here, she had one of those first-generation Kindles, and her son gave me access to his Amazon account and I would help her check out books and return the books through overdrive and uh, that helped keep her occupied during the long winters when she couldn't you know get her wheelchair over here and then later her son bought her a Kindle Fire and a small laptop when he was in town they set up an appointment with me and I showed her how to check out the books by herself and uh, we reviewed the process but I you know kind of had doubts as whether she could do it on her own but uh, she called me later and came back for a review of the process and uh, now I don't hear from Joyce anymore. She figured out how to do it, how to get her, return her books, how to check them out, how to do everything um, on her own. You know, it took her longer maybe uh, more reviewing than it would maybe someone my age, but she learned how to do it and she keeps herself occupied with access to books all year long. Uh, <clears throat> From tablet borrower to tablet owner, that is, I told you Fran's story. I have someone who has one of my uh, my tablets right now that I'm pretty sure is going to be a tablet owner in the near future. I don't think she's going to like 
given up the tablet she borrowed, and she's she's uh, getting used to how to get the books, and she's just like, she was in here today, and she told me she just has access to so many books now, and she's happy with it, so I'm pretty sure she'll be picking out her own tablet in the near future. Um, <laughs> sometimes I get really simple requests, people call and want to come in here, and they just want to, like their kids put eight versions of Angry Birds on their uh, on their tablet when they were in, and they just want to get rid of them. And and uh, one of the guys who needs help with this, he's you know he's very intelligent. A lot of our senior citizens, you know, they're very intelligent. They just didn't grow up in this uh, technology world. Um, but he's he used to be a college math professor. He's written math textbooks, but he just needs a little help with his iPad sometimes because you know it's just not intuitive to them what to do, uh, and usually what he needs help with only takes a few minutes, and um, it's uh, sometimes, you know, the last time it's just that iCloud. His his son set up the iPad for him, and his son changes passwords on him without telling him what the new password is, because his son's like a security, uh, you know, he's really into security, and changes the password all the time, and he gets frustrated with him, but uh, the iCloud sign-in pops up, and he didn't realize he could just you know, hit cancel instead of hitting sign in and just could go on and play his games. So sometimes it's just really simple stuff to show them. You know, sometimes they're stuck at a step and they don't realize that there's an option to, uh, you know, skip, that they don't actually have to put a credit card number in there. They can just say skip. So sometimes uh, it doesn't take but a minute or two and they leave, you know, happy knowing how to handle that the next time it comes up. And uh, I have only had one um, one appointment uh, where I helped someone that wasn't pleasant. <laughs> I had this uh, this older lady that came in with her son, and um, you know I'm trying to help them, and she's she spent a lot of the time correcting me on everything. She couldn't stand it that I was saying and you know adding an app and that you go to the app store and stuff like that. She's like. It's an application. People these days don't even know what the words they use stand for. It's an application. Can't you use the word application? <laughs> so that wasn't very fun. And if a lot of them were like that, where I was corrected everything, I said I probably wouldn't do it. But you know, mo <laughs> everything except that has been so um, so such a good experience. You know, I like helping people. That's one of the reasons I like being in a library. So um, it makes you feel really good to help people and you know enhance their life. So, anybody have any questions on Book of Librarians or they're pretty straightforward top service? <laughs> no, it looks like we're good at this point. No new questions have come in. Okay. All right. The last class we had was on using the genealogy resources, Ancestry and Heritage Quest. That's available um, via the State Library's website. Uh, here's some suggestions I have when you host those. Uh, the Ancestry Library, they can't use that at home, so we host that, uh, you know, since we're a small library with limited number of computers, we host that outside business hours so we can have access to all the computers. Provide handouts from the charts and forms section on Ancestry. I have some of those available, uh, you know, when they come in so that if they do start researching their family, they have a, a place they can fill in information. At the, at the beginning of the class, I just give a brief introduction of both of the resources and tell them the uh, difference, you know, and I emphasize that the Ancestry Library can only be used in library, but that they can access Heritage Quest from home uh, with a state library card. We, uh, we allow most of the time is just for play and exploration of the resources. That's what we spend most of the time doing. Um, Sometimes we hit dead ends, and that's frustrating, but that's just the, the way it is sometimes when you're researching your family. So expect a little of that, and you know, if you've hit a dead end and you just can't get anywhere, encourage them to explore some other avenues. And, uh, and I found that they like to be able to look at passenger lists, citizenship records, things like that. So show them that you know, there's more than just the census information. Um, give some uh, tips for improving their results. Sometimes they need to broaden their search terms and sometimes they need to narrow them because they're getting so many answers. So, you know, show them how to do that. I've already talked about that. 
<laughs> and uh, this is just a, not for the class, but for in general, I like to have a dedicated computer that's for um, electronic resources so they don't have to worry, you know, assure them that you have that, that if they want to come in and research, uh, do research on Ancestry Library, they don't have to worry about the timers like they would on our normal computers. I have a laptop they can check out. If you don't have a laptop, you can just dedicate a computer that, uh, or if you're computers are time, just make sure they know that you can extend the time to whatever they need when they're doing Ancestry because you can't get a lot done in a, in a couple of 30 minute sessions on Ancestry so usually takes a little time. Um, I like to provide handouts and this is a handout that was made by the, our state library and it shows them it's a Ancestry's been updated since this was made, but it still gives them ideas of where to go to, reminds them where to go for charts and forms, tells them um, the website to go to, and uh, just helps them to get around. And they, uh, these are double-sided handouts. I give one for Ancestry Library and one for Heritage Quest. I think they're really handy with the bubbles pointing to the tabs and giving you know a lot of information. I think in two pages. So I'm glad we have these. So when you have the class, um, you know, I think it would have been smarter to, besides just giving them time to play around, if I had some uh, ideas for some little activities we would do and see what they could find while they were there, that probably wouldn't have been a, a good idea. Uh, I didn't do that. If I have a class in the future, I probably will. I mean, if they're going and they're happy researching their family, then, then that's fine, but um, it'd be good to have a few in mind, you know, to say, let's go look up this and... Uh, and have something for them to do to get them used to um, accessing the different parts of Ancestry Library. So I show them how to access charts and forms, and I sh like to show them how to truncate and use wildcard characters because uh, if you've used Ancestry Library or didn't done any research, you realize that the main spellings change, you know, on practically every census on some people. So they can use the uh, asterisk or the question mark. The asterisk can uh, you can truncate a name or put it in the middle, and it'll take the place of you know several letters. So <clears throat> I show them how to view the actual document. We found sometimes that uh, the spelling's wrong in the um, in the information that's pulled up on Ancestry. But if you go and look in the actual document where they signed in their handwriting, that it it looks like it looks like what the name did in the last census. It's just someone's mis, uh, misread it. You know, they, it's hard to read that handwriting sometimes. So, uh, I show them how to go to the bottom on the census and uh, link to others that were in the household and get more information on the others in their ancestors' household. And we, uh, this is a new feature of Ancestry Library. Uh, now they don't have to print out everything at the library. They can send the documents to their email and then they can get to them at home and save the files on their computer or print them off. So that's that's a really handy aspect that they've added. Show them how to print the documents. And we go over how to access Heritage Quest from home and help them get a, a state library card if they need one so they can do that from home. And show them how to take notes in Heritage Quest. And I have to emphasize to them that when they take notes in Heritage Quest, those notes are not saved, so they need to print those off. Uh, at the end, like if they come in here and use Heritage Quest to print the notes off before they leave because the next time they pull it up, uh, it won't be there. So uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, to me, if they're just researching their family tree, I think the Ancestry Library is what you steer them to. Now, if it's someone that's researching a famous person in history or someone famous in their family or the history of a certain area, then uh, Heritage Quest has a lot of useful in. Uh, information and uh, it's aggravating that the articles you just get to see the you know you you don't get to see the full text articles but you can get uh, six articles for 750 and you know if you're researching an area and found six six good articles and only had to send 750 then that's a pretty good deal so it'd be worth doing uh, this is a picture uh, this is a few years old <laughs> that can tell by our computer but it shows less he uh, he used to be one of my board members but he uh, he likes to research genealogy, and once he learned how to uh, how to get around in Ancestry Library, he likes sharing his knowledge with other seniors and helping them uh, learn how to research their family tree. So, if you help someone learn, then um, then they can share that information with others, and they can probably do a 
really good job of it because they remember the parts that were uh, difficult for them or not obvious to them, and then they can uh, it's fresh on their mind, and they can show them how to to get through that. So sum it up. Just need to do it. Reach out to seniors. It is possible to teach old dogs new tricks. It's uh, seniors can learn to use technology. It's not intuitive to them. It may not be as easy for them, but if you have patience and you offer training in a non-intimidating environment, uh, I guarantee you they can learn. They're probably not going to learn it from their kids and grandkids because, uh, you know, like I said, they just take over and do it so fast that it's still a mystery, but you can teach them. It's rewarding to uh, enrich lives. It's okay to not know everything. You can probably tell from my presentation I'm no techno genius. If I, if I waited until I was as knowledgeable as I'd like to be, I'd have never taught any classes. I just figure if I can help them know a little more than they knew before the visit, uh, I've provided a benefit. And uh, it's okay to search for answers. I don't have all the answers, and different devices work differently. And I just, you know, I hope I don't insult any reference librarians, but Google's my friend. I just go on there and say, my Samsung Galaxy 3 won't do this, whatever. And Android forums pop up. Other people have always had the same problem I'm having. Someone has. And you get to read the answers and see what worked for them. So. Uh, and if you show them how to search, then if they have problems at home, they'll think, oh, yeah, she just Googled the answer and, and searched for, for it on the Internet. So it's okay to borrow from others. Just give them credit. So if you find a handout that uh, you like, and as long as you're you know, not pretending it's yours, I think it's okay to, to make handouts for them to take home. And uh, I just want to end with it's time to help seniors with technology. We just got to do the right thing. and answer our mission to support lifelong learning in our communities. And that's all. That's my contact info if you need it. <laughs> well, Does anybody have any other questions or did we cover them as we went? Well, thank you, Doris, very much. Uh, yeah, it does seem that we have covered all the questions. I haven't seen any new ones come in, but we do have a comment we want to share. Yes. One of our librarians says, Doris, you are my hero. What a great presentation. <laughs> This is exactly what we need to do here at our library. So I think it is. Oh, good. That makes it <laughs> worth it. I've been dreading this because I'm so oh, no, scared no, of just no, no. talking to my computer. You, you, you did absolutely wonderful, and we want to thank you for your presentation and thank you for your time uh, with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you for having me. Everybody have a great evening. You too. Thanks.